Hello students, my name is Rochin Chandra. I'm an MPhil candidate at the Department of Criminology and Criminal Justice, Raksha Shakti University, Ahmedabad, India. Today I'll be talking to you on online revenge porn. To begin with, give me, let me give you a brief introduction of when porn material becomes revenge porn and when it is not revenge porn. So revenge porn is when someone shows a private sexual photograph or film of you to another person or people without your consent and with the intention of causing you the distress. It is an offense whether they should show someone, share it with others via social media, email or any other form of communication. It can also be an offense for another person to then reshare or repost the private sexual image or film with others. Revenge porn is not the legal name for the offense, but it is a term which is commonly used and understood. Technically, the term revenge is used in reference to shame, embarrassment and humiliation of the victim in the public domain. A photograph or film is, a private, is private if it shows something of a kind that is not ordinarily seen in public. A photograph or film is sexual if it shows all or part of someone's exposed genitals or public or pubic areas or if a reasonable person would consider the photograph or video to be sexual because of its nature. Revenge porn is often seen as the measure to satisfy the anger and frustration for the broken relationship. It is adopted by individuals who are dumped by their ex-partners. Such individuals could either be teens or adults. However, revenge porn is different from all other forms of cyber harassment. This is essentially because the victims of revenge porn often contribute to their own victimization through various amorous activities or by performing various amorous activities. Even so, it is worth noting that the participation of the victim in this malicious cycle is only partly justified until he or she consensually shares the private information which includes intimate sexual photos or videos with the implied or expressed promise or shared expectation perhaps that it will remain highly confidential. When it, so let's talk when is not, when is not revenge porn. It is not revenge porn if someone shares a sexual or private photograph or video of you in order to prevent, detect or investigate a crime. So for example, someone might need to show a sexual photograph or videos of you to the police to help them investigate a crime. The law states that it is not revenge porn if the photograph or video is shared for the purposes of journalism. For example, a private photograph of you could be established in a newspaper as a part of a news story if the person who shared the photograph reasonably believed it was in public interest. The law also states that it is not an offense for someone to share a photograph or video of you if they believed that it had already been shared or published with your consent and that you <coughs> had been paid. For example, if there is a photograph of you on the pornographic website, someone might see it, see it and assume you have consented to it being posted and being paid for the photo. They might then share it with someone else, share with someone else. This is not an offense. However, if the person who originally posted the image did so without your consent, they may be guilty of an offense. Now let's look at the characteristics of revenge porn. Revenge porn in its basic form involves four major steps. In the first step, the, the victim captures her nude or semi-nude pictures through mobile phones. Here it may also be possible that the victim at the request of the perpetrator captures herself in a compromising position in order to give visual sexual gratification to the partner or consent for capturing her compromising position with the partner. These pictures or audio visual clippings are captured either by mobile cameras or webcam. Next, this private information is sent to the chosen partner, often under implied and expressed assurance of confidential confidentiality, who in turn stores the information in his device. 
It is to be noted here that the victim during this stage do not anticipate the breakup in the future and continue to communicate unreservedly by sexting. More so, the influence of trust in the response in the relationship further encourages the victim to an exchange, to exchange the sexted images, messages, consent, consented captured images in all this and concerned images. In all this, victims fall, fail to see how the abuse of this confidential information which may, may cause her severe defamation and fallout in her professional space, in the, in the professional space. Upon termination of the relationship in the second stage, the received images, audio video clippings are sent to the third party. Here third party is used in reference to friends of the perpetrators who are supposedly the second recipient. The object behind disseminating these images, audio video clippings is to seek revenge by making it public. Finally, the boyfriend himself or the third party may create revenge porn by utilizing the personal information and the obtained clipping of the victim and upload them on various cyber portals like Facebook, Twitter, porn sites and various social networking sites etc. It is also believed that this clipping is circulated through emails to the victims, to the victim's boss at work, wife, family members, etc. to cause shame, embarrassment and distress. Once the clipping is uploaded, the victim becomes fodder for every second voyeur to scoop out a juicy story and damages their image, severe. In other words, the victim may become a sex item. Based on the above description, based on the above description, we can define revenge porn as follows. Revenge porn is an act whereby the perpetrator satisfies his anger and frustration for a broken relationship through pub publicizing false and sexually provocative portrayal of his or her victim by misusing the information that he may have actually may have known naturally or that he may have stored in his personal computer or may have conveyed to the electronic can convey to his electronic device by the victim herself or may have been stored in the device with the consent of the victim herself and which may essentially have done to publicly defame the victim. But how is revenge porn different from cyber porn? Anyone who is new to the concept of revenge porn may be inclined to question as to how revenge porn differs from cyber porn. The answer however is quite simple. Even as both the concepts engender the notion of pornography and the victimization of actors who are depicted in such contents, there is an obvious yet subtle difference between the two. <clears throat> While cyber porn is created with the help of professionals, more professional, professional models who perform for the visual sexual gratification of viewers, revenge porn on the other hand is carried out with the intention to cause severe embarrassment, humiliation and emotional distress to the victim by misusing their private sexual photograph or film. In the late latter, the victim may only consent for the image creation either through sexting or non sexted in victim stuff but do not consent, consent for it to be made public. Here non sexted victim stuff refers to the filming of most private and intimate movements of the victim with subjects concerned by the perpetrator. Thus on comparing both the concepts it is clear that consent is immaterial in cyber pornography whereas in revenge porn consent is used as a weapon to victimize the ex-partner. Turning to the patterns of revenge porn, revenge porn, revenge porn in the cyberspace can be divided into two types. One that camouflage porn and two teen porn. And let's see the camouflage porn. In this type of porn the porn may contain both user generated and user adopted contents. The user generated category may include storing nude or sexually explicit images or the videos of victim. This content is generally self produced by the victim and in turn supplied to the perpetrators. These could be also these could also be sexed images, email, photo attachments, stored pictures which are captured from online video online video chat sessions or even victim consented pictures which are taken by the perpetrator of the victim. On the other hand, the user generated photograph category may include doctored pictures 
of the victim, stolen images of the victim, etc. Such image tarnishing content may be uploaded in popular social networking sites like say, for Facebook, MySpace, Orkut, etc. These typical camouflaged phone could be equally created by teens as well. Teen as well as adults in the above social networking sites in similar fashion as other profiles are created. The only difference among them being legitimacy of the information and the underlying motive behind the creation of the same, same profile. That way, this fabricated profile may as well contain a profile picture that belong to the victim, the profile name which depicts the victim. It may also have an album which contains sextred as well as non sextred images of the victim, almost depicting the victim in the semi nude or scantingly clad dress. To put differently, the victim in the profile may look to the other people as a girl who is ready to solicit ready to soliciting soliciting men of different images different ages further it can be asked why this type of porn content is termed as camouflage porn such profiles do not violate the rules and policies of of the social networking site from prima facie as are in the cases of child pornography also it must be noted that all the social networking sites emphasize on the issue of child pornography from the perspective of child abuse and grooming a child abuse and grooming the, the child for either online or offline sexual gratification. In fact, Facebook has highlighted the issue of sexted images and messages from bullying perspective. Yet how these sexted or stored messages are used to create it impersonated in profile as in the case of camouflage porn is least studied. Let's see what is teen porn. Such porn is seen as one of the categories of porn that are exhibited in the adult porn sites. Nevertheless, these websites showcase safety shields provided by Section 230 of Communication Decency Act codified at 47 USC, which provides immunity from all types of material that attract liability of websites through regular announcement that porn models are professional models who have consented for such performances. The viewers must certify that they are above 18 years and therefore legally eligible for viewing the sites. And the immunity clause provided by Title 512 of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which states that the viewer must not violate others' rights by infringing the copyrights and privacy of others. But a brief analysis of the policies as well as the mode of uh, execution of these sites might bring in a different picture. Such sites serve as a potential platform for the teen to execute revenge porn, revenge over split affairs with help with the help of stored data such as sexted message and pictures, messages and pictures. Such porn differs from cam camouflage porn in that the contributors openly declare their intention to tag the clipping as porn clipping and showcase the victim as a true porn model. Now let's see what are the conundrums with regard to the consent. Consensual sharing of intim int intimate images is often done with the implied or expressed understanding that such images will remain confidential. As the revenge porn victims, as revenge porn victims have told us time and again, they shared their exploited image or permitted the naked photos to be taken because and only because their partners assured them that the explicit images would be kept confidential. Nonetheless, the public tends to have difficulty recognizing the significance of such implied confidence in sexual contexts. Critics resist the criminalization of revenge porn on the grounds that consensual sharing is one, is one context. A trusted relationship translates into consent in other contexts, posting it to the world. That understanding of consent not only runs against widely shared intuitions about other activities but also against the insights of privacy law and scholarship. Consents to share information in one context does not serve as consents to share this information in another context. When a person gives her credit card to a waiter, she is not consenting to let the waiter use the card to make personal purchases. When a person entrusts a neighbor with her alarming code with a, with a alarm code for emergencies, she is not consenting to allow her neighbor to give this give the code out to strangers. What lover shares with each other is not equivalent to what they share with co-workers, acquaintances 
or employers consent is contextual it is not on and off switch now whether is it still revenge porn when the victim is a man it's again a conundrum let's look let's see what it is generally when we think of revenge porn the first thing that flashes in our mind is a terrible ex-boyfriend or partner who posts nude photos and videos of a woman he wanted to embarrass online however if we trace the rules of revenge porn and observe the gender characteristics and roles that have been traditionally shared between victim and the offender it is evident that men have been predominantly taking up the offending role and it's the women who are victimized in the hands of men nonetheless media resources amply reveal that tables have turned dramatically in recent times it readily indicates that lately women have started to use cyber portals to publicize the consensually shared pictures of their ex genitals in order to seek revenge therefore the common image of women falling victim to revenge porn does not hold material significance moreover this also goes to show that cyberspace can be potentially used by either sex to seek humiliation and satisfy the anger and frustration for the broken relationship as a substitute therefore it is fair to assume that men and women use revenge porn in equal lengths to cause emotional distress to the ex partners patterns of victimization of men the patterns of victimization of men by revenge porn are similar to the victimization patterns associated or seen in with victim with women however it is believed that there are some minor dis disparities in the content of the porn preferred by the women offenders to seek revenge over the men victims amongst the two types of porn content that is user generated content or user adopted content which is widely known to be used by the offenders studies reveal that women generated women operated more on user generated content rather than user adopted one although there isn't any specific reason to substantiate the inclination of women offender towards user generated content it is generally assumed that making the privately shared picture of ex genitals public proved mere proved more devastating to the victim and offer very much satisfied rage and frustration of abandonment but again everyone is believed to have different thresholds or mechanism to satisfy the malign feelings and women substantially and women suitably prefer the self produced content in similar line the propensity of women to allow the third party to post the naked pictures of the men on various web portals has also come to sharp focus effects of pornography besides severe defamation the survivors of revenge porn suffer from a wide range of psychological and emotional distress while no academic studies to date have focused exclusively on mental health effects of revenge porn the media reports suggests that victim experience trust issues post traumatic disorder that is called ptsd anxiety depression anxiety depression suicidal thoughts among several other thought among several other health effects as with the psychological harm the victim may also experience a serious fallout at the professional realm he or she may lose their jobs and possibly their career if the consensually shared pictures of their genitals are made public by ex partner seeking to embarrass them in that sense it is clear that revenge porn can be devastating to all its victim or it can devastation to all its victim and potentially ruin the career what are the legal recourses available in india in the indian context victims of revenge porn are rendered protection under section 292 of indian penal code that is ipc which prescribes punishment for selling publishing distributing importing exporting making monetary benefit of or advertising for obscene materials obscene materials similarly section 67 of information technology act 2000 dealt with publishing transmitting causing to be published any obscene material in the electronic form 
Along with this, the victim can also privately file a defamation case against the accused under section 500 of the Indian Penal Code IPC. Charges can also depend on what kind of pictures are shared. The sentence can range from one to three years with if convicted, if, with bail if convicted. Additionally, the victims can also treat this offense as criminal intimidation and file charges under section 504 and 506 of IPC. Do not take pictures or videos of yourself in any compromising position, especially in various stages of undress. It sounds obvious, but remember, once it's digital and on the internet, everyone can see your picture or videos. When a picture or video of you is being taken, always try to imagine your loved ones, em employers or respected peers viewing this image or videos, video. Stop and think, is it something you would be okay with them seeing? Note, every device that has a camera is somehow connected to the internet. Two, if you do not take pictures or videos of yourself in the, in the nude or in various stages of undress, do not send them to anyone. The risk is simply too high, even if you completely trust the person. What happens if their phone or laptops or PC is stolen? What happens if this, their email is being hacked or is hacked? Your pictures can be shared for the whole world, can be shared for the whole world to see. What happens when your relationship ends and this person decides to share your photos or videos with others? Three, parents, guardians, uncles, aunts, and grandparents should talk to their children and preteens about the dangers of taking these types of pictures. What they see as innocent play can quickly be turned into something undesirable and often with tragic consequences. An innocent picture of mom can make it online all too easily. No images or videos of your children or their friends in any state of undress. Even jokingly is, uh, is acceptable. You should, you should speak to your children about this as soon as they have or have access to a camera, a phone with a camera or webcam or when they begin to play with their phone. If something takes an intimate, private, personal picture or video of you, ask them to delete it. Make sure you see that it has been deleted. If you are not interested in sharing this personal photo or video with all of your friends, family, co-workers, future in-laws or husbands, then ask for it to be deleted. Make sure you see that it has been deleted. If the pictures or videos was taken by a professional, make certain you own the copyright. No exceptions. Make sure you own or have the original memory card, the photos or videos were taken on or see they are deleted. If someone has, com someone has compromising pictures or videos of you, be firm in your request for them to be deleted, for them to delete it. Let them know you are serious about your privacy and security. Do not be intimidated. Get help if you need it. Parents, school, police, anyone with authority. In most countries, owing, in most countries the owing and distributing Owning and the owning and distributing pictures or videos of anyone underage is illegal. Friends, don't let friends get photographed or videoed in compromising position or in various stages of undress, especially when, act, when partying. This is not funny. Remember, everyone at the party you are at you are has a camera and the camera is connected to the internet. Gone are the days of innocently flashing the cameras. Seven, do not post or upload intimate personal pictures or videos 
onto any website. This includes all social media and dating sites. Unless you want to share that picture or video with everyone on the internet, including your friends, family, employer, and church. Eighth, friendship and intimate relationships are not always forever. Disgruntled friends, ex-boyfriends, etc. are often the top offenders in posting undesirable images or videos. Even if you are completely, if you, even if you completely trust the individual, you are not sending, you are sending the images to what happen if their phone, tablet, laptop or PC were stolen. What if their, small, if, their, if their small account was hacked? Your image could end up in wrong hands very quickly. Many clubs and public events have photographers, have photographer, photographers that walk around taking pictures and videos. Avoid talk, taking, avoid them. If you do not want you to find yourself posted on an internet site, do not pose for them. Be clear with the photographers. You do not give permission to be photographed. While possible, where possible, have a witness. Tenth and the final one, don't be conned into taking pretty pictures for a photographer who promises to make you a star. Check the credentials of anyone you are getting into a professional arrangement with and do not sign away your rights to your image. Have a professional negotiate a contract for you. I hope you found this lecture useful. Thank you.